Alright, it's time for another math easy solution to discuss further into continuity and look at part three of the video series. Basically look at continuity on an interval rate. So what I mean by that is if we look at the definition of function is f is called continuous on an interval if it is basically continuous at every number in the interval. But if it's only defined on one side of an endpoint of the interval, we understand continuous at the endpoint to mean basically continuous from the right or from the left of it. And I'll explain this with an example. Now before I get to the example, I just want to recap quickly on what it means to be continuous just at any number a. And that's basically it's continuous if you have this case uh, limit as x approaches a of f of x if it just equals to f of a. And you can see more on this and uh, in, uh, in examples on this particular in the video links below. Now the example I want to go over is basically this one example. Uh, show that f of x equals 1 uh, square root x, 1 minus x squared is continuous on interval on this interval of uh, closed bracket negative 1 uh, comma 1. Remember uh, you can see my video link below on closed versus open intervals. This just means you have to include the endpoints and you can rewrite this as basically negative 1 is less than or equal to x and this is less than or equal to 1 so it equals on both sides. Now to uh, basically to show that it's continuous we just have to prove that we have this case limit as uh, x per j of, of f of x equals f of a but for every number in this interval and also uh, just also realize that this interval is actually where this function is defined because inside the square root it has to be greater than 0 right here. I mean greater than or equal to 0 otherwise you're gonna have an imaginary number so that, that's, that's why this has to be greater than uh, absolute value of 1 so that this does, doesn't become less than the, uh, yeah, if this is like, let's say 3 or something, 1 minus, n 1 minus 3 squared is 1 minus 9, that equals negative 8, so that's not defined. Yeah, and I'll uh, just write that down, basically fx is defined only on this interval. Now basically, if we look at the, the interval at negative 1, less than a and less than 1, ex excluding the endpoints, and using the limit laws, then we can see the video links below on the limit laws and the proof for them we can basically find this limit and let's just say a is anywhere in between so limit as x approaches a of f of x now this one would just equal to a limit as x approaches a of 1 this one's going to be minus square root 1 minus x squared and and now also if you uh, recall from the limit law you could break this apart this is from laws uh, 2 and 7 in it or you could just just uh, recap on them and basically this could break up into two. This would be limit as x approaches a of one minus, this is gonna be limit as x approaches a of square root one minus x squared. And this is law two. This is just the uh, was difference law where if you have a difference like this, you just br break it up into this. And now this one's a constant. So this is a uh, constant this is gonna equal to one right here. And this one I think is a constant law, law 7, you just make sure you watch the video link below on limit laws to uh, to make sure which one it is, but uh, anyways. Now we could use the square root law, this one it can actually go inside, and that's the thing that's law 11 minus, this is going to be square root, limit as x approaches a of inside this, now 1 minus x squared, and this is, let's write this down, yeah, so that's law 11, and now if we use basically, uh, if we break this apart again, this one using the law 2, the difference law, the law 7 constant law, and it, to get this 1 out, and also this uh, the squared law, I think that's what it's called, that's law 9, then you could basically get 1 minus, well, 1 minus a squared, this is basically just plug it in. And, and basically I'll just write this down, it's law 2, 7, and 9 we used, uh, 9 is to get this x squared just becomes the a inside, and now th this free reference, and now this is going to equal to, well, this is just f of a. So thus it's continuous, because now we have f of x equals to f of a. You have 4 whenever a is uh, less than, uh, I mean, yeah, less than 1 greater than negative 1. So we have this one right here. Now similarly, you can do the basic exact same thing as we did above, and we can find that limit as x approaches, well, negative 1 from the uh, right side is of f of x, that's what this plus is. This equals to 1. And now if you just plug in f of uh, negative 1 inside this function, we're going to get, well, this one's right here. Plug it in, we're going to get 1 minus negative 1 squared. That's just going to be 0. Even if this is 1 squared, it's going to be 0. Then 1 minus 0 is, is 1. So then we're just going to have equals to, well, f of negative 1. Thus, that's continuous on it. And also, we have from the, if we look at the other endpoint, x1 from the, let's say, left side of it, 
of f of x. This again, if you, just, uh, you could do the exact same limit so as above, and we're gonna get one. This equals to basically f of one. We just plug in the one. So then basically this is continuous. It continues uh, from the right at one and it continues from the left, I mean this negative one, and it continues from the left at positive one, exactly from the definition I just went over. Yeah, thus basically it's continuous at the endpoints and in between, so then it's basically continuous overall. Yeah, and thus basically f is continuous on this on this closed interval negative one and one. And if you were to graph it with Google like I have done here, just one minus squared of one minus x squared. As you can see, this is the negative one is continuous. You're not, you could good draw it without removing your pen. And it's basically it's actually uh, in fact just a half a circle or a semicircle of the function. Yeah, just the lower half of this circle, x squared uh, plus y minus one squared equals to one. Uh, that's the equation for the circle, and this would be actually two sides of it, up and down, but it's just the lower half. And you can see more on uh, on what the circle, the equation of a circle, and uh, what this all means in the video link below as well. Well, that's all for today. If you learned about this, uh, yeah, this this video on this basically, and also this example on how to uh, basically use this definition of continue continuity on an interval. Basically, understand continuous functions in general. That's all for it. Let download these notes in the Dropbox link below and stay tuned for another math easy solution.